Hello, this is Dan Pro. Welcome to my rigging channel. We're in part 6B of my advanced deformation tutorial series. In this tutorial, I want to go through my step-by-step -step process of weight painting. And it's a really simple operation. Basically, all we need to do is go joint by joint, and we are just going to set our weight paint. When we rotate on a single axis for one of our controls, we will just set the weight paint for the head bone and the neck bone in this instance, and fix the deformations. And we'll just go to the next axis, fix the fix the uh, weight paint for that, axis after that, the side to side, the twisting, that's basically it. We're just going to go axis by axis, fix the deformations, fine tune them, kind of set the balance, and we will have good weight painting. Now, this is going to be a multi-pass process. I don't ever expect to get this in one pass, so I will go through a very quick pass, and then I'll come back, fine tune it, do it again, do it as many times as I need to. I look at this more as a um, as someone who's making a drawing, you would start with some basic shapes, you would set down those shapes, then you come back, add your lines, fine tune your lines, add your colors, fine tune, uh, mix your colors. For, if you just kind of approach it that way, where you're fine tuning in multiple passes and getting to a finished piece of artwork, um, it's, weight painting is really going to be easy, it'll be enjoyable, and it's not very hard. So I'm going to go to my add brush. I'm going to turn my weights very low, 0 0.025, and I will use auto normalize from here on out. That way, when I add weights um, to one group, it's going to remove them automatically from the next. And to keep those weights normalized and to keep the um, colors that I'm seeing on the screen um, true and the way that Blender will see them, because Blender uses normalized weights, but it doesn't force us to do it. So. I'm going to recommend that we always have our weights normalized. Now I have the control selected. I also want to make sure that I have the deformation bone that I'm going to uh, paint on for that group selected as well. Remember we cannot move our deformation bones since we locked all the transforms. So we'll just rotate this on the x-axis back and then we'll start adding or subtracting weights wherever we, need, wherever we need that to create the deformation that we need. So I'm going to add some weights here just so the um, area of the chin here is going to retain its base position. I always like to think of this as basically kind of anchoring. So the more influence you add to a bone, the more it's going to try to maintain its base position. Looks like I need to puff this out. Oh, that's pushing it in. I'll back that up a little bit, although this needs to be pushed in just a little bit. And that looks relatively good. Let's rotate this forward looks like this needs to retain its its um, shape a little bit better so I'll add some more weight to the head bone taking the influence adding the influence to the head bone and taking it away from the neck all we're doing is trying to set a good balance we're just looking at our topology looking at the results of the weight paint that we currently have adding and subtracting weights it is that really that simple using very small weights we can Watch our topology line, our topology lines, and then just um, add weights where needed and get the deformation that we want. Now, it looks like we have kind of an S curve going on back here. So I'm going to select the neck bone, and I'm just going to add some weights here to pull this section out to get more of a straight line when I rotate that head forward. That is a little bit better. Now, Throughout this process, I'll typically go to my subdivision surface modifier and turn that off. And you can see everything gets jagged and janky, and it's going to scare you a little bit. <laughs> but then you'll be able to see exactly what your weights are doing. We're getting some um, smoothing from that subdivision surface modifier. If you turn it off, you're going to know exactly where you are deficient as far as your weights. And again, just go add a little bit of weight, straighten it out, watch your topology. And again, this is a very simple process. You will have this done in no time, so that looks a little bit better. I'll clear out the rotation of the head control. Select this in the head bone. Let's rotate it on the Y axis to see how our twisting is working. We can add a little bit of weights. I'm just watching the topology. If I need more weights to bring that in line, I will just add it. If I need to subtract it, I will subtract it. It's Again, it's a simple process. It's really easy. Keep your weights normalized. Just watch what's happening to your topology when you have your um, pose bones, your deforming bones posed. You need to 
pose your bones here just to make sure that you can see what's happening and then you just fine-tune everything add subtract that's it so that's the process we just simply work through joint by joint right now we're doing the head bone and the neck bone at this joint and then we will once I have a decent setup there and I'm happy with that weight paint I will move on to the next joint so the neck bone and the chest and the shoulders and set up that deformation just by rotating one axis at a time and fixing those deformations now I'm going to skip ahead here because I want to show you how to fix this Y axis deformation for this two bone deformation system so this is going to be slightly different I'm going to do R Y Y negative 90 and you can see that this deformation is absolutely horrible from our uh, auto weighting but we're going to be able to fix this in just a few minutes here and I'm going to show you my patented method of doing that so I'm going to select this lower deformation bone I'm going to go up to the upper arm and I'm going to start influencing that to pull one line so I'm going to go from the upper arm on one topology line down to the um, inside of the the elbow here just adding very little influence and trying to straighten that out if I go to this bone I need to follow this line down I'm going to add a little bit of influence just to pull this side back Again, I pose this to about 90, negative 90 degrees. I'm just adding weights over here just to pull them out of the way and give me some room to straighten this line out. I just want a nice straight line from here to the top. I can go back and forth a little bit, add more weight up here, pull that around. And once I'm happy with a nice straight line or a straighter line, I can tab into edit mode. And I'm going to finish this in edit mode as well. Let me just adjust these a little bit. So I'm going to start up here and select the loop that goes all the way around. I want to make sure that the um, vertex on that line is the active one. It should be white. Then I'll normalize and copy that around. Normalize, copy, just rinse and repeat. Make sure this vertex and then the whole loop is selected. Normalize and copy. That's just copying this vertex is weights all the way around that loop as I normalize and copy all the way down we're almost done one more to go and that is the Y deformation now if we take a look at what happens here let me clear out the rotations of my control that has given me a nice y-axis deformation so wherever I rotate the control on around the y-axis I'm getting a nice smooth deformation just by painting one line and then uh, copying that around in edit mode so I will repeat that process for all of my y-axis and double bones I'm going to enter time-lapse mode now just because this um, process is pretty repetitive and I'll just be uh, working my way through the rig and uh, fine-tuning um, each joint basically the weight paint between t only two deformation bones now right here I'm going through and finishing up the um, forearm deformations for the two bone deformation system in the forearm Again, it's just a copy and paste and quickly I am done there now this has been recorded over uh, two different sessions I don't like to sit down and try to make everything perfect right away it's just kind of a bad way to work I think if we just kind of go through on your first uh, pass and set up the basics and get everything moving in the right direction then you can come back take a little bit of a break you know don't sit there for more than an hour um, get up do something different come back put fresh eyes on it and then you'll be able to spot uh, problem areas a lot easier I feel so I like to approach this just like an artist would approach uh, creating a painting or a drawing where you're basically starting with some very sloppy lines and basic shapes and then you're coming back and fine-tuning um, that stuff later in multiple passes multiple iterations and uh, getting the final uh, product at the end where you've had you know all the layers on top of each other all the iterations and then you get a piece of art so I'm gonna work my way through this first pass again at the neck one axis at a time x-axis check the z-axis check the y-axis 
adjust the weights, try to get the best balance that you can achieve. And again, it's just adding weights or subtracting weights. If you add weights and it does the wrong thing, just subtract the weights. If it's not doing the right thing, try the next bone. Try to add weights or subtract weights from the next deformation bone. It's really an easy process. You'll see exactly what's happening. Watch your topology lines. And uh, weight painting shouldn't be hard. As long as you're normalizing your weights, because Bunder uses normalized weights, you should be uh, fine here. Now you can see that I started adding a lot of extra weights to the chest bone. That's when I was moving the neck. It was just affecting that area too much, and I wanted to anchor it there. Now I'm working on the shoulder. I'm adding some weights back into the breast and the chest area. That is when I lift, when you lift your shoulder up, obviously your pecs and your chest and breast will rise as well. Now again, this is a very rough pass. It's not going to look the greatest, but I do want to get some influence so there's some natural fleshy movement there. Now I'm kind of trying to anchor that armpit area to move up and down with the uh, with the shoulder bone and trying to refine the upper arm bone there. You can see I'm posing it in different directions. Now the over the head, that's kind of important to make this look good. Again, I'm anchoring most of those vertices around that uh, the armpit area to the shoulder. There's a big, <laughs> a big error there in my white painting. I must have uh, transferred the wrong ones across. So quickly, I've set that up. Something else you want to um, take note of is I, th I feel that I needed more topology to get a better deformation. You want to kind of take notes. I'm not stopping to um, change any topology, but I have taken notes of um, I have a few six-sided. Um, holes that I needed to take care of and I also want to add some more uh, more geometry to the back side of the elbows just so I can get a more pointed elbow and also for the fingers when I get to those I wanted to add a little bit of extra geometry to the top of the fingers just so I have more geometry on the top of the knuckle and I'll get a better deformation there so take notes of those things you can stop and fix them if you wish I'm gonna do this later after I get this base weight painting down I will just make a duplicate of this mesh in order to be weight painted and then I can make those topology changes fine-tune those areas get a better deformation and again just like an artist would work it's just iteration after iteration I haven't spent any time doing any UV unwrapping or anything of that nature so I'm not losing any time with those uh, doing those um, processes or creating any shape keys this is all about weight painting getting everything to move and deform the best I can with only bones and only weights now here I'm adding quite a bit of influence to the um, deformation bone for the hip and that is basically again just to anchor those vertices so they're not being affected too much by the leg and now I've added a little bit to make that uh, fleshy movement a little bit of low weights to the leg up into that glute area again fine tuning and uh, trying to get that push and pull working so a little bit of extra uh, weights to the top of the thigh so and those weights were going to the again to the hip bone just so when the leg moves up it's going to kind of push them back down again it's just a push and pull type of operation add weights where you need to subtract weights where you need to always watch your topology lines rinse and repeat and here's the knee it's always best to make sure that you add a little bit of weights from your shin to the back of the knee so when you lift your shin up, it's going to push that area in a little bit. You see, that's what I'm doing there. I'm also adding some to the front. So when I lift the shin up, it's going to pull those vertices out. It was looking kind of uh, flat and not very straight. So that's kind of what I'm trying to set up here. And you'll probably notice that I'm turning the subdivision surface modifier on and off throughout this process. So I can actually see the weights without the extra smoothing from the subdivision surface modifier. It's going to give me more accurate weighting. And when I turn that subdivision surface modifier back on, I usually just have instant better results. I'm almost done with the first pass here. A little bit of weight painting on the heel there to smooth it out and back into the toes. Re-adding some weights that I deleted earlier or subtracted earlier. It's always important to just pose the bones, look at what the deformation is, and then adjust. I think I've just went through and updated and transferred the weights for that first pass back to my clothing mesh 
and now we're into a second pass where I've taken a break, took the dogs for a walk, and then sat back down. Again, fresh eyes on the project, and now I can fine tune the base weighting from the earlier session. Sometimes I'll do three or four of these different sessions. Again, I don't like to spend more than about an hour doing this weight painting. It's always important to get up, refresh yourself, do something different, and then come back with fresh eyes, put it back on the project, and then you're going to get better results, and you're not going to be frustrated. So if you try to sit down and do all this in one pass, I, it's just going to frustrate you, or at least it does for me. I don't have the patience there. Put on some easy listening music, like any Iron Maiden um, music. I find that to be very tranquil and help me keep focused. And just go ahead and we paint. If you need to stop, get some reference. There's tons of reference on YouTube with people working out and lifting weights, and you can see how their muscles are reacting. Uh, check that stuff out. Try to get your deformations to look like that. And again, take notes to wherever this rig is going to be deficient. So we're not going to get perfect deformations with this base set of deformation bones, but we can get a good idea of where the rig is going to be deficient and where we're going to need extra helper bones to fix those deficiencies. So in a lot of cases, your weight paint is only going to work look well on one axis of rotation. So for example, if your X rotation for your thigh looks good and you've added weights and it looks good on the X rotation, but it looks awful on the Z rotation, don't worry about that too much. Since the X rotation is the main rotation axis, we will fix um, the deformation problems on the Z axis with helper bones. So sometimes you always have to make that choice between one axis or the other. I always like to try to choose the axis that's um, most needed. Now here I've noticed that I've got a bone issue where the length of the end of that fingertip isn't um, proper. And that one looks a little short as well. So I've made note of that and I'm going to come back and fix it a little bit later. But I'm forging ahead again just in iterations, checking each one, rotating on a single axis in a single direction try to fine-tune everything, adding a little bit of extra influence on the, from the chest down to straighten out those vertices. And then you can see that I've turned off the subdivision surface modifier, and everything will look jagged and janky and can <laughs> make you a little sad when you see that, but however, when you start weight painting, you can really fix that. Turn that off. You're not getting that um, false impression of what your weight painting is actually doing this is really going to help you be accurate with your weight painting turn that off and straighten those topology lines out now for the belly button area i would just assume to skip over that until all the surrounding geometry is weight painted and working well then you can go back and spend time um, fine-tuning those areas so when you've got those little micro details just kind of skip over them get the uh, the vertices around those areas working. Now here I've added a corrective smooth modifier just to kind of test and see um, what it's going to look like. The one thing you do not want to do is white paint with that corrective smooth modifier on because just like the subdivision surface modifier you're going to get a false impression of what your weight painting is doing because it's trying to smooth your weights. So as you're adding and subtracting weights make sure the corrective smooth is off, turn it back on, test your poses, make sure that everything looks good but while you're weight painting uh, absolutely do not ever have that on there so looks like we're coming to the end here I'm doing some posing making sure that the uh, weight painting looks good when I lift the arms over the head again just trying to reassess where I need to focus my uh, attention for the next pass checking out some of the scaling and squashing and stretching controls And that's nearly it. In the next pass, uh, I will have done a few iterations, got the weight painting to the best of my ability for these deformation bones, and then we will start adding some extra deformation bones or helper bones to fix any of those deficiencies and to add extra controls, extra muscle controls, and things of that nature. So I hope these tips help. Until next time, good luck.